What's going on guys, it's Creature and today we're going to be doing a little deck profile on a brand new deck from the Ghost from the Past 2 set. We're going to be doing a deck profile on Agents. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about the deck, uh, how I decided to play the deck, and how I've came up with these combos and stuff uh, from other people's lists and other deck profiles I've seen. Uh, Agents are a deck that topped uh, a few events in Japan, in the OCG, when they got their structure deck, and... Uh, well, we're in the second week of Ghost from the Past 2 now, and it has already topped regional. Now, this does not mean that the deck is absolutely fantastic. It isn't tier 0, but the deck does play through a lot of hand traps and uh, facilitate some really, really big combos. Uh, there's lots of different builds that people are playing. People are playing with the Shine Balls, without the Shine Balls. Some people are playing, like, um, heavy Synchro builds. Some people are playing heavy Link builds. Um, this is kind of a mix of the both. A mix of the both. Uh, it is a Shine Ball build. It is um, more facilitated to links, but it does still rely heavily on this synchro right here, which is the synchro for 10. Um, today we played at Locals for the second time, so I played last week and really did not know what I was doing. Um, I knew the bread and butter basic combo to facilitate this absolutely ridiculous board, but if that board got stopped, I was a bit like... Paths? even when I used had several extenders in hand, um, just simply because I just didn't know what I was doing. But I then sat on DB, I tested some hands more, uh, tested some things, uh, got rid of some things, changed it. I am now happy with this list. It is definitely by far not a completed list, and I definitely will be making some changes, um, especially after today's matchups. Today's matchups were uh, against Despia, Dragon Link, and Flunderies, three very top tier decks. I 2 0 Despia. Uh, 2 0 Dragon Link and lost 2 1 to Flunderies. Uh, a mix of um, my initial combo, which I pulled, just does nothing against Flunder. It does like a Scythe Lock and a lock them from Special Summoning, which does little to nothing when they do nothing but normal summon. Uh, and then a little bit of Miss Siding. And then game three, we we drew really well, but he just Barrier Statued passed, and we couldn't out the Barrier Statue. Every time we had an out to the Barrier Statue, he would have, like, a drop to half the attack. And then the next turn, we had an, uh, we drew an out to the Barrier Statue in terms of, like, just beating over it. And then he got Book of Moon, and then the turn after that, he got Book of Moon again. And then the turn after that, he drew a Flunderies card and, well, began doing Flunderies things. Um, and at that point, it was already over for us, which was a real shame, because I think if we sided better... Um, we definitely would have won that and we'd have gone pretty much probably undefeated all day today with this deck. So we're going to get into the deck profile. We'll show you one or two um, mixed combos and maybe a, a test hand at the end. We'll see how long the video is. Uh, we should know that we are missing one card from the extra deck, which is a Baron de Fleur. I borrowed it today and uh, give it to the guy back. Uh, Baron de Fleur is needed, I would say, for this deck as it's a synchro for 10. And that's kind of what this deck aims to do. Uh, so we'll go for main, extra, and side for the day. Obviously, the side and uh, extra is completely up to you. The main is also completely up to you, but this is, like, my most optimal build, I believe. Uh, so without further ado, we'll get into it. Uh, we'll start with the best card in the deck. Uh, the brand new card from Ghost from the Past 2. This is the Agent of Life, Neptune. Uh, you can discard this card to spec any agent monster from your hand or graveyard. Um, it's just ridiculous. Like, you don't need to explain any more than that it is a monster reborn on legs uh which we will get onto monster reborn later because it's a card i'm thinking about also playing just because it's just an extender it just does everything um everything this deck needs like it gets hand trapped a couple of times and it can still carry on playing and still do things but just being able to stop that perfect hand trap that your opponent has just means like instead of making like appaloosa ip you end up with like appaloosa ip a book of moon a banish and a scythe lock um, like, that's what this deck does, like, it, it, it goes from, like, 8 negates to 6 to 4 to 2, depending on how many times your opponent hand traps you. Um, without further ado on that, we're also playing 3 copies of the Agent of Creation Venus, we're also on 3 copies of the Agent of Creation Earth, and 3 copies of Diviner of the Herald. Now, these are all grouped together because these are kind of all your starters slash extenders that you, whoops, pretty much need. Uh, any of these pretty much facilitates a full combo. Diviner of the Herald, due to um, quite an unpopular opinion, is the worst one. Uh, so much that I think I might cut one Diviner just to make this deck um, a more rounder number. I think at the moment it's at 42 or 41, um, but the deck is super duper consistent. I just think if we 
put it down to 40 and, and change a couple of cards, it will be just as it will be just a tiny bit more consistent. But I could be wrong on that. Um, for those that you don't know, the Agent of Creation Venus lets you summon Shine Ball, and the Agent of Creation Earth searches a Agent Monster. So this can search your Venus in order to facilitate combos, or this can search your Neptune to discard and special soulmate itself back from the grave. Earth is also a tuner, which means it gives you access to Halka Firebrack plays. Uh, Diviner of the Herald will actually send a copy of... Let's try and find it. There it is. Uh, Trias Hi Hierarchy from your deck to the grave, which will then tribute the Diviner uh, to summon out, and the Diviner effect will then activate in order to summon uh, a copy of Buton, which will then give you a Synchro for 10 play. We'll sort of go over that combo a little bit more after. Um, then after that, of course, your Venuses need to summon something, and they're summoning your Shiny Balls. Your Shiny Balls are great. I've been balling all day today and loved every last minute of it. Um, just normal Fairy Level 2s. Uh, something cool is uh, you can use Buton in the Grave to banish and make any Level 4 or lower Fairy a tuner. So you can make your Shine Balls a tuner in order to facilitate Synchro Plays or Hulk Fibroxes. Uh, we're also on 2 Majesty Hyperion. We're not running Master Hyperion. I might consider running it, but I'm not too sure. I'm considering running that. There's also a consideration of running, um, I think it's called the Chorus in the Sky, which is like a pay 1,000 Monster Reborn, which is searchable. Uh, there's also uh, Monster Reborn as well, and Triple Tactical Talents is another card I'm also thinking about playing as well. After that, we're on one copy of the Agent of Destruction Venus. Uh, this does the same as the Creation Venus, only from Graveyard and Banished Pile. Uh, also, the Agent of Creation Venus can activate um, multiple times, so you can go Venus Effect, then Venus Effect, then Venus Effect. The Destruction Venus is one effect, you have to pay up to 1500 to summon them there and then. Uh, and then the last sort of fairy-ish cards we're running is one copy of Archival Christia and one copy of Artifact Scythe. Now, in the events that Artifact Scythe is banned when you are watching this video, uh, and you're thinking, oh, I can't play this deck anymore, or oh, the deck is going to be nowhere near as good. Artifact Scythe is 110% not the win condition of this deck. Does it help the win condition? Does it facilitate the win condition? Is it a fantastic card and should be banned? Yes, but it is not the, I'm going to Scythe lock you, and if you stop my Scythe lock, I do nothing. And if you don't stop my Scythe lock, I win. Because you Scythe and Christian in the same turn. So... Scythe is completely not needed if you do resolve the Christia effect. So if Scythe gets banned, generally, I think I'm just going to play the artifact. Is it called Moral Tech? Same thing, level 5, only it pops a monster on summon. Still will facilitate the Baron de Fleur Christia combo, which we will show you later. That's kind of the monsters in the deck, the starters and the main combo pieces. Uh, we are, of course, running hand traps because this is Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, there's no game complete in this without hand traps. Um, starting off with the only one we run at 3, uh, Herald of Orange Light. This is a fairy deck, and this card is fantastic. Um, I was running Crossout Designators for a while, and I might go back to running Crossout Designators as well. But Herald of the Orange Light is fantastic. Uh, this thing today has stopped Nibs, it stopped Ash, it stopped Ogres, it stopped so many things. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't stop Imperm, which is a little bit of a problem. Imperm is probably the deck's weakness. But once you play through your Imperm, you're fine. Uh, and if you're worried about the discard for this, um, like we said before, Neptune summons from Grave. So what you tend to do is um, use like Earth, Earth Effect, to search something. And then whatever you're going to summon off Earth uh, kind of becomes the discard fodder so that you can use Neptune to revive it back. Uh, it's also good uh, for dumping things like Majesty Hyperion, which can summon from the grave, uh, Trias Hierarchy, which can summon from the grave, uh, a Dead Shine Ball, which is doing nothing in hand. Um, there's a couple of other things, like... That's probably a Buton's not the worst thing to discard and have in grave. Um, but yeah, like, the, the, this deck, do, the, the discard is not a major issue in this deck at all. Um, definitely would run three of this, would not change this at all. Uh, hand traps will change sort of dependent to the format. Um, I'm a big fan of two. I'd rather run uh, three sets of hand traps at two as opposed to like two sets at three. So I'm on Ash Bell Ogre. Uh, at the moment, Ash just being the best generic hand trap that there'll ever be. 
uh, Ogre for those Brave Engine things, and Bell also for like Brave Engine uh, DPE branded in red. A couple of other things as well. Uh, this is just my choice of hand traps. Um, I may change the hand trap ratio. Uh, probably not though. I'm really happy with those at the minute. Uh, moving on to the spells. The Central Moon in the Sky, this just facilitates your agents' like bonus effects. They all get A effect, and then they also get like a bonus effect if the Central Moon in the Sky is on the field. This card is now searchable by uh, Neptune getting banished, so super easy to get to this card. Uh, three, the Sacred Water in the Sky. Uh, this is your rotor of the deck. A uh, fantastic card that just does everything. It also has a cool gain effect, which hasn't come up yet to do with... Um, like, if Hyperion's on the board, but you could possibly cheese some sort of winning time with that. I highly doubt that would come up, to be honest. Uh, now for the card I think I'm going to change. I was running three copies of E-Telly. This was just an extender for if everything got, like, hand-trapped. Uh, this would then just summon an Ogre, which would make Hauk. But the issue is you'd then need something with the Hauk to do stuff, like... How it gets you your tuna when you already have your other things on the board. So like another fairy in order to make the link two or to start climbing into the synchros or anything like that. So I think I'm going to cut this. I think I'm going to cut this for talents uh, because talents and prosperities. I feel this is enough extenders uh, in order to literally see either a copy of this or a copy of Neptune or a copy of the Trius Hierarchy. Um, other than that, like I said, I'm thinking about possibly playing like Monster Reborn as well, uh, and a couple of other things. And then the last one is Foolish Burial. Uh, this is also kind of just facilitates almost full combo, because you can send the Trius Hierarchy and um, tribute it to get effects. Uh, so now that we've talked about that, let's talk about some other cards I've seen uh, played in the main deck, why I just sort of shuffle this for a little bit. Um, Trickstar Corabane is something I'm going to try out. It's a free fairy that will summon um, if you control no cards or only Trickstars. Seen something with, a, I think it's called Time Maiden. It's a Time Lord card. Does a similar thing. Uh, a lot of generic fairy stuff. But I think I'm just going to go with the generic, generic stuff like Monster Reborn and Talents. I feel like it's just better in any way. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um... There was something I was trying today, I mean, I've even got the cards over here, uh, with this, because how can summon Despot, and then you can go uh, into Auroradon, token, 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 then Despot, make a Synchro for 10, uh, which will be your Master Flare Hyperion, and then that facilitate combos, but the, the, the lock on this means you can't do any Link Summon, so this is more for a heavy Synchro build. Um, that's kind of it, like... What else have I tested with this deck? That's kind of it. I tested three Trius Hierarchy for a while and it just was kind of bricky. Uh, wouldn't go for that build. Oh, the the Ultra that also got a Starlight that's a fairy. The... Oh, what's it called? The 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 weird one. It's not really expensive. It's, it's a fairy. I think it was in Dawn of Majesty. Um, it's super cheap. It also has a Starlight print as well. Um... I can't think of the name. It's like a level 7 that just like specs if a fairy's targeted or something like that. Um, that's that's also another thing. So we give this deck a little bit of a shuffle now. Uh, we'll show you the extra deck and then do a little bit of a power shuffle. Um, so like I said, we are missing Baron de Fleur. So Baron de Fleur is the first card in the extra deck. Baron de Fleur is fantastic and is um, it's a part of like every combo. You make so many synchro for 10s with this deck that Baron de Fleur is like a must-have. Uh, I am going to be picking up my uh, copy soon, uh, instead of keep borrowing my friends, but it's one of them. Like my friend keeps borrowing it, I'm just like, I don't need one. You're not using it, I'll just keep borrowing yours. Um, the card's really expensive as well, but that's not normally a problem. Like We, we have good trades enough to facilitate a Baron if anyone's willing to trade one. Uh, and then the MVP, the main boy of the deck, the Master Flare Hyperion. This lets you send a agent from... Uh, deck to grave as cost, and then it pretty much copies the effect. Um, another super cool thing is if you can get to this, 
you can send a copy of Venus and then if this gets impermed or veiled or anything and you have the Neptune in hand, you can just Neptune and summon out the Venus anyway and then Venus will start going to town, uh, start summoning all the Shine Balls. We are running a TG Wonder Edition, this is here because of the Halka Fibrax combo. We are also running one copy of the uh, Pluto Agent card, I have yet to summon this and will possibly be cutting it. Uh, what for? I don't know yet. I was testing something with uh, Zeus and Sky Calvary because two Shine Balls can make Sky Calvary, bounce a card, and then you can summon a Zeus on top. Um, but I'm thinking I might not go for that. A couple of Link 4s, probably the two Link 4s you play in every deck. Appaloosa, both the Goddess, acts as Code Talker. If you're playing a combo deck, you tend to play Appaloosa, and acts as Code's just in every deck anyway because it facilitates uh, OTKs and, and securing out games. Uh, one copy of Nightmare Unicorn. Uh, this was kind of my go-to IP Masquerader target for the day. Um, the combo that we do kind of ends on IP, uh, allowing you to uh, IP into Unicorn, and then Unicorn can shuffle back a card. Uh, really wish I thought about that during the Flunder match, as it possibly could have won me the game. Uh, and then the only other Link 3 we're playing is the Celestial Nightlord Parshaft. This is how you summon Christia. Uh, what this does is uh, you can discard one card and... Add one century in the sky or card that specifically lists the century in the sky in its text from your deck to your hand. And if century in the sky is currently on the field, you can add a fairy monster instead. So the combo will go and add for the century in the sky, then you activate the century in the sky, use the effect of Parshaf to discard, and then add yourself a copy of uh, actual Christia. And then it also has another effect of if a fairy monster leaves the field, you can banish a fairy monster, spec a fairy monster from your hand with a higher level. This will come up when you start triggering the Scythe and the TG Wonder Magicians and stuff like that. For the Link 2s, we're on uh, IP Mascarena, we're on Crusher on Hulk of Mybrax, we're on Artifact Detector, we're on the Protector of the Agent Moon. Uh, these you should know by now, these are in a lot of combo decks. Uh, the Agent of Protector Moon is the new one. That allows you to, uh, if it's linked summoned, add, uh, sorry, send a card with the Sentry in the Sky in its text um, from your deck to Grave. So you send Majesty Hyperion, which will then banish a card from the Grave to Summon, facilitating a level 8 board, a uh, guy on the board to 2 in order to basically then synchro for 10. Um, the other thing I might test actually now, just thought about it, is uh, Ready Fusion. With the level 2 normal tuner fairy thing that was in one of the. Decks. It's just a normal vanilla level 2 tuner um, fairy monster. That's another thing I've also considered. Uh, Ready Fusion, Instant Fusion, because that can uh, obviously facilitate that. Uh, and the last two Link 2 we made was uh, Herald Mirage Light. Uh, standard Spell and Trap Negate didn't really make it enough. I'd rather have gone for IP over this whenever I could have made it. So that also might be on the chopping block. And then Al Mirage and Link Spider round up the links. And now moving on to my side deck choice. Uh, again, completely format dependent, completely um, event dependent, etc. Uh, we ran the Cypher in package. Uh, this is also a psychic, so it can summon off of the Cosmic Cyclone, off the uh, Emergency Teleport. And then we run the Cosmic Cyclones. Uh, we run Forbidden Droplets. We run Dark Rulers. And we run Lightning Storms. Um, spell and Trap removal to deal with things uh, and then stop big combo boards. And then, you know try and stop big combo boards. Uh, a well-timed gamma, it can stop any combo, so. Yeah, so I'm thinking, do we test hands or do we show combos, what do we think? We could show you combos. Let's show you a combo and then maybe test a hand if it's not like a 30 minute video. Uh, so this combo requires uh, Earth, a copy of uh, Neptune, or a copy of Venus. This does not really matter. So either of these two. Uh, and then a discard. So we'll use E-Tally here as my discard. So it's a two and a half card combo. Um, obviously you max three of all of these uh, on top of this. Um, all of these, the missing one is searchable off this. So technically you are playing like 12 copies of all of these. So you you should be fine and you see this combo way more than you think uh so we'll just go with um we'll go with this just just to be safe uh, so this will be your hand this is a blank it can be any card in the game it does not matter and this is kind of how the combo goes so let's put these quite low 
uh, you will normal summon and activate the effect in order to add a agent monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, you add the one that you're missing, basically. And then I'm going to immediately use the effect of Neptune here to summon the Venus. Uh, you can activate the effect of Venus. If this was to get hand trapped now, you are okay because you still have access to Halka Fibrax here. You also still have access to the uh, Moon Agent link. Uh, you have access to IPs. You can have access to a lot of stuff. Uh, but if your opponent does not have hand traps, uh, you are off to the races and put the graveyard there. Uh, we're going to activate the effect of Venus twice to summon out a Shine Ball. And then, of course, summon out a, another Shine Ball. Uh, now you have two Shine Balls on the field. You are ready to start linking. Uh, you're going to immediately go into your Protector Moon. Uh, let's pull these down a little bit so everything is in shot. Uh, you're going to then go ahead and use the effect of the Protector Moon to send a agent to your little graveyard here. Uh, we're going to send the Majesty Hyperion to the graveyard. Shouldn't have put this on a super screen, it's like really zoomed in. It's kind of a bit too zoomed in for combos. Um, but we are fine. Uh, and then you use the effect of this again to summon a third token. I don't know why I didn't do that earlier. There we go. Remember guys, you will have multiple cards in hand here. So if you're playing Cardbine, Crossout or Herald, uh, this combo is Nibiru proof. If not, then, you know, there's ways around it at this point. There's still things you can do. Uh, there's always an extending play if you get Nibiru. I've been Nibiru twice today and still managed to perform uh, some really, really good combos. So although this deck is uh, kind of not Nibiru proof, uh, they have to Nibiru you really early into the combo because at any point you can just say, okay, I've had enough of this combo now. I'll now make an Appaloosa or I'll now make a Baron or anything like that. Uh, what we are going to do now is we are going to use the moon and the earth here uh, to go into our Hulk of Fibrax. Uh, wrong pilot, where is the ultra deck? There it is. Uh, Hulk of Fibrax will summon and activate its effect to summon a tuner. Uh, and the tuner we're going to summon doesn't really matter here as long as it's level 2. Uh, you can go for Herald of the Orange Light because... Um, there's a, a couple of cool combos you can do with cards I'm not playing to get this back. Uh, things like um, Hippo Shinigan and stuff that can add lights back from your grave to your hands. So you can add the Herald of Orange light back uh, with that. Uh, we're then going to go ahead and use the effect of Majesty Hyperion in the grave, uh, banishing specifically our Neptune. So our Neptune's banished, we're not going to deal with that anymore. And we are going to summon our Majesty Hyperion. So our board is now looking like this, with the one discard still in hand, which is in this case e uh, The effect of Neptune will activate when banished in order to search a Sanctuary in the Sky. So we're going to go ahead and add a copy of Sanctuary in the Sky to our hand here. The hand is kind of off camera, but that doesn't really matter at this point. Um, and then we're off to the races now, where this here is going to facilitate a Synchro for 10. Uh, leaving you with just Venus Shine Ball on the board here. Uh, the Synchro for 10 will, of course, be the Master Flare Hyperion. And then we're going to use the effect of Master Hair Hyperion. Uh, the effect of this is to send an agent and then copy its effect. So we're going to send the Destruction Venus now because we've already used this Venus. And then the Venus and the Shine Ball here can start to facilitate any sort of Link 2 play. What we tend to go for here is Artifact Dagda. It's important that you still play this even if Scythe gets banned because it is a fairy and you'll see all the things that it facilitates in a minute. We're going to go ahead and use the effect of Majesty Flare Hyperion to pay 1500 life points and summon three Shine Balls from the grave. And then as Chainlink 2, we're going to activate the effect of Artifact Dagda here in order to set a Artifact Monster. These will all, of course, summon. This now gives us a full board of five monsters again. And will get us a artifact scythe. Let's try and find that artifact scythe real quick. There we go. Here's the artifact scythe we now have set. The artifact scythe. And now it kind of decides what you want to do. Uh, what we're going to do now is activate a copy of the sanctuary in the sky. And then we are going to go ahead and link off the 
Shine Ball and the uh, Lancia, uh, not the Lancia, sorry, the Shine Ball and the Dacta here to make the Celestial Night Lord Parshaf. Uh, we Parshaf effect will activate, discarding our random card in order to search a uh, Christia. You can search any fairy. If you already have Christia here, you can search something like Herald of Orange Light just to be safe from the Biru. You don't have to Christia here. There's the Archibald Christia. There's also a combo you can do with this that would search something like Chaos Valk, and then Chaos Valk can banish something to summon. That's another monster on board and it help facilitate other Link 4 plays. Uh, and then, you know, various things you can do here. You can link these off into an IP. You can link these two off into Herald of Mirage Light. You can link these off and this into Appaloosa. There's a lot of stuff you can do. Uh, I personally like just going IP and then passing turn. So this will be the end board that it makes, which is Halka Firebrack, IP, Celestial Night Lord Parshaf, Christia in hand, as well as at least two other cards, and a Scythe set. So you might be thinking this board doesn't look great. You said this deck was good and had several pieces of interaction. Well, it is all in your opponent's turn as well. Going to your opponent's turn, you'll use the effect of Halka Firebrax to tribute and special summon a Tuna Monster. The Tuna Monster you're going to summon is, of course, that TG Wonder Magician that was in the extra deck before. You'll use the effect of TG Wonder Magician to destroy and spell and trap, targeting your own Artifact Scythe in order to pop it, and then activate the effect of Artifact Scythe in the graveyard. This will allow you to summon and activate the effect of Artifact Scythe. Uh, as chain link one and then tg1 the magician as chain link two you can synchro these off into the only card we do not own which is the baron de fleur and then trigger the effect of the celestial nightwall parsha because a face up fairy has left the field to basically banish any card you can just banish the scythe here and spec a fairy from your hand so what this ends on here is a banish a negate and destruction a Scythe Lock, a Christia Lock, and if everything goes, because currently, we, of course, we are locked out of summoning, an IP Mascarena. But, of course, like I said, you could just kind of change this IP Mascarena to a Herald, and then this is an additional negate of spells and traps. So if you were to do this, you would have this. Two cards in hand, which could be two hand traps, two extenders to facilitate this combo a little bit more. Um, banish, Spell and Trap Negate, Omni Negate. Uh, nothing, and then uh, no special summoning, and no special summoning from the extra deck. So that's kind of how this combo works, that's what this deck can do, and that's of course just any two cards. There's a lot of other things, they all kind of get to this way. Um, it's hard to explain, that you just really have to play the deck in order to know um, the combos and the lines of play that you can do with the deck. Uh, I kind of want to do a test hand, but I think I'll have to power shovel to do the test hand. Uh, and the, the video is already half an hour, so I don't want it to go too high. Maybe. Um, I'll show you some other cool ways that you can make a synchro for 10s. Uh, because once you get to um, the Master Flare Hyperion and you send a Venus, whether it's Destruction or Creation, and you get your three Shine Balls, that's kind of where your combo can just sort of branch out. Whether you want to just start link spamming into things like School Red Appaloosa, Access Code, etc. Or if you want to go for a more control build where you scythe lock them. Um, we've discussed that one. Let's have... Uh, where's Dawn? We'll show you how Dawn gets you the Synchro for 10. Uh, so Dawn of the Herald is also a one card Synchro for 10. If you did not know this, a normal summon effect will send you a... a Trias Hierarchy to the graveyard. Uh, and then you tribute these to special summon these. An effect of this when it is tributed lets you special summon a fairy uh, from the deck. And then you go Buten. And then you go Synchro for 10. And then once you've gone your Synchro for 10 here, you go into your Master Flare Hyperion. You can once again just start comboing off from here. Send a copy of Venus. Use the effect. Uh, summon two balls. Uh, you would go two balls here because um, you are going to uh, scythe lock them. So in order to trigger the scythe, you would go to summon the two balls instead of the three. 
because you can then link uh, one of these off into Spooner and then link both of these off into uh, the Dagda, trigger the effect of this to summon the third Shine Ball, trigger the effect of this to uh, set an artifact, that would then get you your third Shine Ball, that would then set you your artifact scythe, and then uh, from here you can then just simply go like Butan Engrave to banish, uh, which would then allow you to go into Hulk, summon the tuner, and then Hulk can tag out for one of Magician and Scythe Mock them. Or you can go for a little bit more of an advanced play, which would be uh, to link off uh, these two cards here into uh, something like Protector Moon. Uh, Moon would then send your Majesty Hyperion. Uh, Majesty Hyperion can then banish, like, anything just to summon. Uh, and then, you know, you've got access to place here. Again, you can start to make things like Nightmare Unicorn, or with an extender, you can go into Appaloosa. Uh, you could even just get rid of both of these into, like, a Mascarena, and then Mascarena both of these into a Appaloosa that way. Um, there's just so many different lines of plays that you can do. Uh, all depends, of course, like the other things that you have in hand. Um, you know, facilitating Hulk off this, Hulk would then be able to summon anything. Uh, you know, any follow-up from here, any additional fairy from here, um, would then give you access to a bunch of additional synchros as well. Um, but that's kind of it. That's, that's the agent deck that I'm working on right now. I'm still looking for opinions, so I'm uh, more than happy for you to Tell me what you are playing, or whether you think you should play this or that, or don't play this build, or play this card. I'm more than happy to play, uh, play test any other people's opinions. I'm really enjoying the deck. I've played it for two weeks now. I've done uh, okay at both locals. I definitely feel like a competent player with this deck. I feel if I learn this deck, if you will, I will have a, a lot of respect in terms of big events, maybe I uh, top a regional or something with this, um, or do well enough with it. I feel like I can do good enough with this deck to do something at least. Top a regional, um, winning locals isn't a big event for me, so top a regional, maybe maybe go bigger than that. Maybe, maybe like, I'd be happy with day two at Nats with this. I don't know, if I made day two with Nats with this, I think I'd be happy. Um, even just winning a few side events with this would be, be uh, pretty happy. I am thinking about playing this this format for the rest of the format. It's this or Despia. Despia is kind of just so overplayed already that I feel like everyone's going to be preparing for Despia and no one's going to be preparing for this. And I think that's what will do well at these events. Um, today, people just don't really know what to play. Somebody debarried me and called Synchro, and I was like. Okay, I don't make Majesty for Hyperion, and then I just proceeded to make like Appaloosa um, IP uh, and the Celestial Night Lord Parshaft, which then summoned, of course, Christia. So, yeah, it did nothing. Like, uh, it didn't do as much as it could have, but it still pretty much did full combo. Uh, but that's it. Enough rambling. It is like, what time is it now? <laughs> Quarter past one, definitely bedtime. I'm going to get myself a drink and get in bed. I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! all day at Locals. And uh, it's definitely time to go uh, sit in bed and go to sleep. But thank you all for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It's been Voice Breach, guys. Peace.